Welcome to Compute 175 Python Review. In this video, we demonstrate how to repeat code in Python using for loops. We'll introduce the for loop, discuss the range function, and later see how we can iterate over characters in a string directly. For loops allow us to repeat some code a fixed number of times. If you find yourself saying, I want to repeat this code three times, or I want to repeat this code five times, or I want to repeat this code any given number of times, for loops are probably the best option. For example, there's a yappy little Pomeranian called Pom Pom who borks exactly five times anytime he greets you. Let's use Python's for loops to create a Pom Pom simulator. So we start with for, then a variable in range, uh, five, and then do print bork. And let's run it. Excellent! As you can see, this program borked exactly five times. In this example, the range function returns an iterable that yields exactly five items. For the purposes of this video, I'll use the term iterable and sequence interchangeably. However, note that there is a slight difference. The for loop repeats its body once for every item in the sequence. Num in this example is a variable. But if it's a variable, what are we assigning to it? Let's write a program to find out. So, for num in range, let's go three this time. Print num is num. And let's put a little divider there. And run it. Interesting. So, we see that for each repetition of the for loop, the variable num is reassigned to the element in the sequence. This is thanks to the range function. By default, range returns a sequence starting from 0 up to but not including the number we gave it, increasing by 1 each time. Think back to string indexing. Why does range start at 0 and not include the stop value? Let's rewrite that last program to print each character of the string compute 175, one on each line. Let's start with a string. Next, I ask myself, how many times do I repeat this? I need one iteration of the loop per character. I can use the len function to get the number of characters in the string. So for num in range of length of string, then I can print the character at that index in the string. Let's try that. And voila! Range allows us to index every character in the string in order. This should give insight into why range yields zero up to but not including the number given. Range can also be instructed to start at a number other than zero, as well as instructed to step by more than one. It can even step backwards. For more information, go to your console and type help range. We can use for loops to iterate over items in a sequence directly without the use of range. Say we have no need for the indexes into the string. We can rewrite the previous loop as follows. Instead of invoking range, I can simply ask for each character in the string and print out the character. So let's try that. Notice how the for loop iterates over characters in the string in order. This allows us to write more complex code without having to worry about string indexing. We can simply work with each item in the sequence individually. Now for a more complete example. Say I want to count the ratio of consonants to vowels in a word. First, I'll take a word from standard input, then I'll maintain a count of vowels, and the same with consonants. And now for our for loop, for letter in word. Let's check if the letter in the string is in the set of vowels. 
If so, we'll increment the vowel count. Otherwise, we'll implement the consonant count. Finally, we compute the ratio. Ratio equal consonants divided by vowels. Then we'll print it out. Print word has ratio consonants to vowels. And let's try it out. I'll try out the word schmaltz. Schmaltz. Schmaltz has a whole bunch of consonants for one little tiny vowel. Let's try that with a different word. So the word will be Y-B-A-O, which I'm reliably informed is a kind of tree poison. In contrast to schmaltz, this does not have very many consonants to vowels. So, as seen in this example, I can inspect each character of a string individually, without having to worry about string indexing. For loops handle the common use case of iterating over each item in a sequence. However, not all repetition is accomplished through using simple sequential access. In the next video, we'll discuss the more flexible while loops.